If you could only eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? It's a question that people have been asking each other for fun for like ever. And sure, most people just ask in the context of like, what is your favorite food? But today I am asking the question literally, if you could only eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? Cause here's the thing, there is a right and wrong answer to that question. Provided of course that you actually want to live a long and healthy life. If your answer is like, I don't know, cocktail wieners for the rest of your life is gonna be a lot shorter than you might expect. So what should you be responding with the next time someone asks you that question? The answer is a lot more controversial than you might expect. internet welcome to food theory the correct answer to the question if you could only subscribe to one digital series about food for the rest of your life what would it be which means that if you're not subscribed yet well then you should hit that button right below this video it is the correct answer after all so the question of one food for the rest of your life is a bit of a tricky one like what in this case defines food one individual item one composed dish how many ingredients are we talking about because the answer is gonna be different for each of those I mean you guys know me I'm a nerd who tries to think through all all of the different loopholes. And if you ask me the question without restricting my options, I'm gonna choose a sandwich. And the follow-up question is inevitably, well, what's on that sandwich? And I'm gonna say all the ingredients, like all. Put every food in existence between two slices of bread and boom, I just beat the system via a technicality. But of course, that's the boring answer. You know, that's cheating the spirit of the game. So let's look at it from a different angle. You get one item, one individual ingredient for the rest of your life. Well, for that, the potato is actually gonna be one of your best choices. You see, vegetables, for all their vitamins and minerals, don't have enough fat or protein to keep you alive and healthy. Meat, meanwhile, doesn't have enough fiber and is missing several other key nutrients. But starchy foods like the potato have an unusually high amount of protein. This is actually something that we covered five years ago over on Film Theory when talking about the movie The Martian. Five white potatoes a day is enough to get you all the essential amino acids that you need to build proteins and repair cells. White potatoes, though, are low in vitamins A and E, which could result in nerve damage and severe vision problems if that's all you're eating. That's why the sweet potato is an even better option, because they contain all the important stuff that the potatoes have, as well as vitamins A and E. But I hope you like them, because to get enough calcium, you're going to need to eat about 34 per day. And this gets back to our initial question. One food for the rest of our lives. The way I see it, the question is asking us about one dish, one composed food, something more than just one ingredient, but not so broad that it can be an everything sandwich. So what I want to look at today are foods from menus that allow just a medium level of customer customization that's just right, like a Domino's pizza, or a Subway sandwich, or a Chipotle burrito. Places that let you play around a bit and build your own with a handful of options. But in order to figure out which dishes from these restaurants, if any, will help keep us alive for the rest of our lives, we first have to understand what exactly our body needs in order to survive. Other than water, of course, which hopefully you can still drink outside the challenge. In general, your body needs five major categories of nutrients to keep going. These are carbohydrates, fats, proteins, minerals, minerals, and vitamins. So in order to build our perfect lifetime food, let's break down the nutrients by category. First off, carbs. They tend to get a bad rap with all those no-carb diets out there, but they are essential for proper bodily function. You see, they serve as your body's main source of fuel because they get broken down into glucose. Without carbs, your body is going to start breaking down all the protein and muscle mass inside of you for that energy, which let me tell you is not ideal when you're living off a single food. It's not ideal in general, to be honest. Ideally, we'd be aiming for complex carbohydrates, where the sugar molecules are strung together in long, complex chains. This means that they break down slower and keep us fuller longer. We also want to make sure that we're taking into account fiber. Fiber is such a complex carbohydrate that the body just can't break it down. As such, it helps with healthy digestion, lowers cholesterol, and helps regulate blood sugar. Whole grains, vegetables, and fruits are all places to find complex carbohydrates. As such, I say we use a whole grain pasta, bread, or crust as our starting point. And as we see what other ingredients that we need, we'll just build our dish from there. Now, let's talk about proteins, which are vital for the growth and maintenance of the body's cells and tissues. Now, despite the fact that they all get lumped together into one category on the nutrition label, there are actually billions of different protein species. But every protein strand is made up of the same 20 building blocks, called amino acids. 11 of those amino acids can be created by the body, 9 cannot. We tend to call these 9 the essential amino acids because we have to obtain them through our diet. Meat, poultry, eggs, dairy, and fish are complete sources of protein, as they all 
all contain all nine of these essential amino acids. Next up, fats. Just like carbs, fats often tend to get a bad rap too because, you know, fats. But in reality, fats are important for boosting the body's ability to absorb vitamins, protect organs, and build blood cells. In fact, fats help our neurons to function because they're wrapped in an insulating layer of fatty cells called the myelin sheath. No, the problem isn't so much that fats are bad, it's that some fats are bad. Specifically trans fats. Trans fats are made when liquid oil gets turned into solid fat, like shortening or margarine. And they most often appear in things that have been battered and fried, as well as baked goods like cakes and pies. Unsaturated fats are the ones that we want to be aiming for here. Specifically, we want the essential fatty acids contained within those unsaturated fats. Linolenic acid and alpha linolenic acid. Two compounds that cannot be synthesized by the human body. Canola oil, olive oil, nuts, salmon, and avocado are just a few of the foods that are going to fit the bill here. Finally, we have ourselves vitamins and minerals, which aid your body in a variety of ways, including normal growth and development, as well as supporting your immune system. If you've ever wondered what the difference is between vitamins and minerals, it's that minerals are inorganic and vitamins are organic. They're made from plants and animals. In total, there are 13 essential vitamins and also 13 essential minerals. So as you can start to see, any food that hopes to be the one has its work cut out for it. Between the 13 essential vitamins, the 13 essential minerals, the 9 essential amino acids, the essential fatty acids, complex carbs, and fiber, that is quite the checklist. But looks can be a bit deceiving. Not all these nutrients are hard to come by. For instance, wheat flour, which is the basis of every crust, tortilla, and bread that we're going to discuss today, single-handedly hits every essential amino acid, both essential fatty acids, plus it contains carbs and fiber. Now, whether or not it provides enough of these nutrients is a question of portion size, and that is a whole nother can of worms. For today's purposes, we're strictly looking at whether an ingredient fills in a checkbox, yes or no. So, because flour has us covered on the carb, protein, and fat fronts, what we're really going to need to focus on are the essential vitamins and minerals, because those things are not always super easy to find. The four most common vitamin deficiencies in the U.S. are vitamin D, which among other things helps build and maintain strong bones, vitamin B6, which is vital to your nervous system and immune system, and vitamins B9 and B12, which are both key to red blood cell formation and cellular function. On the mineral side, calcium and iron deficiencies are quite common, so we're going to keep an eye out for those nutrients in particular. Now then, on to the fun part. Let's see how difficult or easy it might be to build the meal that Ed Krause will have to eat for the rest of his life. Didn't hear that one, Ed? Yeah, this isn't just some thought experiment. There are real stakes involved. For you. Not me, though. Not, not so much. Okay, let's start at Chipotle because, well, I pretty much was living off of nothing but Chipotle burritos for a semester or two back in college, so this could wind up being pretty validating for 20-year-old Matt Pat. So I'm going to begin where every Chipotle burrito begins, the tortilla. According to their website, Chipotle's flour tortillas have exactly four ingredients. Wheat flour, water, canola oil, and salt. As mentioned earlier, wheat flour takes care of a ton of checkboxes. Mixing in canola oil and salt, suddenly we've knocked out 18 of 39. Off to a pretty solid start there, Chipotle. Next up in the line, as many of us know too well, the rice. Chipotle's cilantro lime brown rice contributes a whopping 11 additional vitamins and minerals that the tortillas didn't have. Thanks for sneaking in that vitamin C boost there, lime. Then come the beans. Black beans wind up hitting more of our empty check boxes than pintos, so we're gonna go with black, which contributes calcium and vitamin B9 to the cause. And that, my friends, means that we've already knocked out 31 check boxes without even selecting our protein. For protein, I'm going with chicken. Not only is it delicious and one of the cheapest proteins on the menu, it also takes care of vitamin B12, B2, sulfur, and potassium. Chipotle's mix of Monterey Jack cheese and white cheddar covers iodine, vitamin A, and vitamin D. So all that's left is picking our veggies, and fortunately all we need to knock off the list is vitamin B7, aka biotin. A deep dive into Chipotle's ingredients list reveals that the chicken and any veggie that we just put into our burrito contains sunflower oil, which contains plenty of biotin. So not only did we hit every essential nutrient with the least expensive burrito on the menu, we did it with so few ingredients that Ed Krause has the freedom to add whatever veggies and sauces he wants. Go ahead, Ed. Your essential nutrients are already covered, so follow your heart for the rest of those toppings. No guac, though. That costs extra. So basically, any chicken burrito from Chipotle is gonna meet our criteria, and that's already a pretty darn delicious option for one food for the rest of your life. It's gonna be a tough one to beat, so let's see what you got, pizza. Specifically, Domino's Pizza. Their hand-tossed crust, of course, uses wheat flour, which means that all our carb, fat, and protein boxes are taken care of. But they're not just using any old flour theorists, they're using enriched flour, which means a handful of our essential B vitamins and iron are also taken care of. Soybean oil, salt, yeast, and cornmeal are used in their hand-tossed crust as well, which means that at least 31 of our 39 checkboxes are handled by the crust alone. Domino's Pizza Sauce, of course, comes next. The sauce's tomatoes help us hit another
another box, vitamin C. And then there's the skim mozzarella cheese that tops Domino's pizzas. If traces of calcium, vitamin A, vitamin B12, and iodine weren't already present in other ingredients, well then they're handled now. So with that said, a Domino's pizza with zero toppings nearly takes care of all our essential nutrients. Only sulfur and vitamin D really need to be addressed at this point. So is there a single topping that takes care of both? Well, yeah, basically any meat topping on the list has both. Congrats again, Ed. If Domino's winds up winning this thing, you'll have the freedom to choose your favorite Domino's meat topping to add to your pie. But wait, there's still one left to go. Subway, our sandwich shop, could be the maker or breaker of the whole thing. There are a handful of different breads to choose from at Subway, but which one hits the most of our ingredient checkboxes? That would be the Italian herbs and cheese bread, which contains, as advertised, Italian herbs and cheeses. In all, the dairy that you see in Subway's Italian herb and cheese bread takes care of every unchecked box that we need, except for possibly sulfur. Subway, geez, calm down, will ya? I'm trying to make an engaging YouTube video over here. Meanwhile, you're ending this convo before you're even done picking your bread. Anyway, there are a bunch of ways to finish off the sandwich with a touch of sulfur. Again, basically any meat on the menu is gonna hit that checkbox. But there are a couple ways to do it without a meat product, specifically the Veggie Delight sandwich, the single least expensive sandwich on Subway's menu. A Veggie Delight with mustard and or onion is gonna take care of pretty much everything you need. Are you gonna want to eat mustard and veggies for the rest of your life? I don't know, but you can. And that's really what we're interested in here today, friends. So you know what? I gotta admit it. I didn't expect any of our competitors, let alone all three, to be able to supply us with essential nutrients this easily. But here we are. We did the research and they all are at least present in some capacity. So which one do we choose? The chicken burrito from Chipotle? The meat topped pizza from Domino's? The veggie delight from Subway? Now, as I mentioned earlier, we sidestepped an important aspect to all of this. If Ed's gonna actually be able to survive off of one food, the nutrients need to be in their correct proportions. He's not exactly gonna be thriving after a few decades of only getting 2% of his daily recommended magnesium or whatever, you know? And the truth is, we don't have access to the amount of each ingredient in each dish. We only know that the ingredient is present or not, so disclaimer time, I was curious to see how easy or difficult essential nutrients are to come by in popular foods. So please do not go out and start ordering cheesy bread at Domino's every day. Not only is it not viable as a real life diet, I don't think it's gonna be great for your health. That said, given the four options laid out before us, I think I have to go with Subway's Veggie Delight on Italian herbs and spices as the food that Ed Krause should eat for the rest of his life. Because there's plenty of room on that mustard drizzled bread loaf to stack a ton of spinach. And it is the only of the three restaurants that offer spinach on the menu. Remember all those common vitamin and mineral deficiencies that I mentioned at the start of the episode? Calcium, iron, vitamin D, vitamins B6, B9, and B12? Well, spinach is loaded with almost all of those. Kinda makes you wonder if Americans are deficient in these vitamins and minerals because we don't eat enough green leafy veggies. Go figure. So throw out all that analysis we just did because in the end, all you really need is just a sweet potato wrapped with some spinach. Sure, you'll be able to survive until the end of your natural life, but at what cost? Sign me up for the cheesy bread with jalapenos. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. Thanks for watching, theorists. Speaking of Subway's bread, be sure to check out our episode on how the restaurant was actually taken to court for how much sugar is in their bread. Can it technically be called bread? Should it technically be called cake? Should you technically hit that notification bell right this very second? Well, the answer to two of those questions is yes. Now, if you'll excuse me, my microwave just stinged, my sweet potato is done cooking. I'll see you all next week.